Welcome to another special episode of our Life in Christ broadcast. You are watching CMTV and you are currently on our live broadcast of the Life in Christ series, which we've been having for a period of time now. And if you're just joining in, I'm your host of this series, Bertram Ginyu, Senior Pastor of Eternal Life Ministry. It's been wonderful so far and we have been trailing through very awesome broadcasts and very awesome editions and episodes of the series. So far we've handled a lot and presently we are talking about how to find the will of God. And so we are doing in many different circumstances and we plan to relate in this on how God reveals his will through many different ways. And we've been sharing about the importance of walking and knowing God's will. We've been sharing about the importance of walking and working in God's will. From words that came from the mouth of Jesus himself, when he said, Not all that call Lord, Lord shall enter into, the, into life that is in the kingdom of heaven, but they that do the will of his Father, that is God Almighty. And this word is to the whole world. Whether you're Christian or not, whether you're a serious Christian or an, or an unserious Christian, this serious life in Christ is for you because I'm just an oracle, I'm just a vessel and God is changing the world with an unchanging word. And I bring you this unchanging word and the end point of it is that through this word and through this time and this moment that you're sharing with me on TV, there shall be a transformation, there shall be a lifting up in your life there shall be more opening to know the will of God and to live the fullness of the life God has called you to live. That's my goal. That's my prayer for you. And I know that in this broadcast, indeed, you are going to be greatly enriched, greatly blessed. And the words I'm giving out, they are seeds. They are going to be planted in you. They are going to be watered. If what I'm saying you already know, I'm reminding you such that you will be more, more, much more fruitful. If you did not know, I'm informing and I'm teaching you. And this is the counsel of God by which you are nourished, equipped, and made fit to enjoy the beautiful life we have in Christ. Hallelujah. So you are joining me and I want to say you can feel free to participate in this broadcast this evening through the number displayed on your screen, SMS only. You can send your prayer requests, you can send your contributions, you can send your questions and whatever you have for or uh, in relation to this broadcast. I'll be responding to you straight away and we'll be talking about a lot. But before we engage and delve into the main discussion of today, I want you to take time out, invite others, invite friends, invite loved ones, tell them that I'm watching something very important and Pastor Bertram is live on air and he's talking about life in Christ, finding the will of God. We're going to go into our topic of today. And the topic of today is finding and walking in the will of God when God is revealing his permissive will. So we're going to display that topic when we come back. We'll, we'll take a break to give you time to, time to catch your breath, call others to join us live, and then we're going to have a word of prayer and we will delve into serious matters for the day. So sit tight, stay tuned, call others to join us. We'll be back. on our episode 8 and if you're just joining in we are talking about how to find the will of God and we are on our series life in Christ so we're talking about how to find the will of God and today we'll be talking about finding the will of God when God's will is permissive or conditional so when everything about what God is saying or what God is doing is conditional or permissive how do you get to know where to find yourself falling where what decision do you take? How do you decide? How do you conclude? That's what we are looking at today. Because there are times God gives us the, the, the option. He gives us the privilege to make our choices. 
There are times he gives us the, the leverage to decide. And I want to tell you, it, it, it's happening so for a reason. And oftentimes, this is where men, men either come to him or walk away from him. Or sometimes because we have the free will, we choose to go our own way and to do things our own style. So in a nutshell, how free are you to do things the way you want? Oh, you are very free. In the Bible, one of the chief apostles, Apostle Paul, he said, all things are permissive, but not all things are profitable. The fact that you have the freedom to do anything you want doesn't mean anything you do, because you can choose to do anything you want is profitable. So in the midst of the freedom that God gives us, how do we get to know what we have to do, which is not a compulsory instruction or a compulsory direction from God? When you have that leverage, how do you get to choose what is God's will? Because the normal tendency is that when you give people freedom, when you give people leverage, everybody does what they want. And so if truly, as Jesus says, not all who call Lord, Lord, that's claiming to have God or to have Jesus as the Lord of their lives. Not all who call Lord, Lord, not all who claim, not all who even seem to participate and enjoy the blessings of being in Christ shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, shall enter life. But they that do the will of the Father. So when God leaves you to make your choices, how do you get to find his will? When, for example, if you go to ask God, what do I do? And God answers, what do you want to do? How do you get to fall in line such that what you do is going to be what God loves? Because I tell you the reason why many people are finding it like a choice whether to believe Jesus or not is because God has left us to choice. There is a dimension of him, the purpose why he created man, or the way he has chosen to walk with man such that at moments or at point or at points in time, God gives us the ability to make choices and preferences. So the question today is, how do you get to the level where in your freedom you can make your choice to be God's choice? And I tell you, it's wonderful, it seems mysterious, but one of the kings in the Bible who fought, like I always say, above 54 wars and never lost any is King David. David had the opportunities to make his choices, the free will, at, at very difficult moments. David chose to walk exclusively on the will of God. He said some, some kings, some warriors trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I will put my trust in the Lord. So even when David has his own choices to make, he chooses to make the choice that is suiting to God. And that's the call to every life. That's what Jesus is calling out for. And that's why I'm reaching you today. Whether you think you are going to church, you are going to church or not, whether you think you are in business or not, wherever you are, God wants to bring you to that state where even when you are free, you can be able to make the choice that is his choice. That is what it meant when the Bible said David was a man after God's heart. And David says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. So what you think will prompt what you choose. So David is asking and he's saying, his heart he guards such that his own will and his own desires will not be the exclusive drive but that as a call of God, he can do what is fitting to the Lord. And without delving too much or staying more there, we are going to read our key scripture or key verses of the Bible, books and verses of the Bible today. I chose Apostle Paul's letter to the Roman church, Romans chapter, chapter 12. It's actually Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Not 1, verse 2, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And if we read verse 2 of Romans chapter 12, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So Apostle Paul is writing to the Roman church, 
He's asking them, do not fashion yourself according to this world's pattern. Why is he talking about this world's pattern? So everything I'm going to be sharing today, we are going to use these words and these counsels of Apostle Paul as guides. Remember, our goal for today is how to find the will of God, how to locate yourself in the will of God, when what God presents before you as concerns what he wants is conditional or permissive. Whatever you decide, he will permit. Joshua said, decide today whom you will serve as your master and Lord. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And first John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world and gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now he says, God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Those who believe are safe. Those who do not believe are already condemned. And so there is a choice. That's what is called free will. And sometimes in theology they call it free will and predestination. God has given man that opportunity as a relational being and as a steward of creation to be able to make choices. So that's what we are looking today. And Apostle Paul is talking to the believers in Christ Jesus. He said, do not think, do not live. Do not act as those who are in this world do. Do not fashion yourself like people of this age. Thinking system, economic system, educational system, religious system, spiritual regulations, which are not in accordance to the will of God. Apostle Paul says, do not be conformed to that way. You want to do business? There is another way we do business. There are other underlying principles. You want to be in politics, there are other underlying principles. You want to be in the educational sector, there is a goal and there is a foundation. So do not be conformed to this world system, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is going to be the end or the goal of the renewal of the mind, which is getting the mind of Christ as God wants us? Apostle Paul says when that happens, you will be able, in the midst of many choices, to declare to all creation and to men what is the good will of God, what is the acceptable will of God, and what is the perfect will of God. So we see, we see the difference between what is perfect, what is good, and what is acceptable. So there are some things that God allows to happen, not because it's perfect. It's just his tolerance. They operate under his tolerance margin. For example, the suffering of believers is not the perfect will of God. The oppression and existence of evil on the surface of the earth and in the world is not the perfect will of God. If you are going through sickness, if you are going through trial, that's not what God wants for you. But he permits it to happen. So things exist under divine permission. And when you know the will of God, in the midst when you have choices, you can be able to know that this is what God permits Yet this is the perfect will of God and this is what is good in the sight of God and in the sight of men. And as sons of God, if I'm preaching to you and you want to know Jesus or you already know Jesus, he is calling you out so that through you he can be able to prove to the world what he permits, what is good and what is perfect. So in the midst of making our choices, we always fall back to him. And so say, do not be conformed to this world. Don't go in the world system. Don't go the world's way. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And in the second scripture that we look at, that is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, we get to see how this transformation takes place. Apostle Paul says, we all with open faces, unveiled faces, we behold as in a glass, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, and we are changed into that same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we are changed into that image of the glory of the Lord. What is this glory of the Lord? Is Christ. We have been transformed. We have been metamorphosed. So how do we get transformed? Number one, beholding. First, your face has to be unveiled. The mysteries of God have to be revealed to you. 
An understanding of the divine word has to be in your heart. That's the first state of transformation. You need to allow the word of God to have its place in your heart. You need to allow the word of God to change your philosophy. You need to allow the word of God to change, to be able to influence your decisions. That's the meaning of open faces. When your mind, when your heart, when the perspective in which you look at the word of God is opened enough for the word to take effect in your life, that is what is called open face. So we all with open faces, when the face is open, when your heart is willing, you get to behold. How do you behold? You hold the word of God which you have found, the rhema you have caught, the understanding you have received. You meditate upon it in times of prayer, in times of worship, in times of fasting, in fellowship with the saints. That's how you behold. And we can go on talking about prayer and meditation, the stages of prayer where beholding is effective. But I'm not going to dwell on that now. But I want to say this is what beholding means. When you catch the revelation of God's word, you give yourself time to be able to imbibe and to assimilate, to digest the word. Give yourself enough time. Enough time. When you eat your natural meal, it takes time to digest. The same, when you receive the word of God, there is a time that is supposed to be given with you holding this word in your consciousness, holding the word of God in your subconsciousness, and even allow it to penetrate your unconsciousness to the level where transformation can take place. That's the meaning of beholding. How do you behold? You hold the word in meditation, giving time, minutes, hours, days, weeks to look at the mystery and think about the dimensions in which that mystery is operating in your life. You want to know more? You can send me messages. And we're going to share much more deeper in it so that we escape this time bound on this TV presentation. Hallelujah. So that is how we behold the glory of the Lord because His glory is in His Word. God reveals His glory and the mysteries of His life through His Word. Through the revealed word, we behold the glory of the Lord as in a glass, like a man that is looking at himself in the mirror. And when we see who we truly are, when we see what God truly perceives of us, that's how transformation takes place. We are being changed. We are being metamorphosed. We are being conformed. We are made alike more and more. We become more of a manifesting exhibition of that glory of God and what he thinks and what he has in mind as concerns us. So that is how transformation takes place. And I've said through the word, through meditation, through prayer, through fellowship with the saints, and through depths of intimacy with God. And I said for that to happen, you need to give yourself enough time. You need to give yourself enough time to be in prayer, not just words, enough time to understand. Now, God wants to hear you more than you want to hear him. And Jesus said, with every swing of the hammer and cut of the saw, he is dreaming of when he's going to come to take you back home. And that is when there shall be the fullness of manifestation of eternal life. So God wants to see you in glory more than you want to be in glory. I don't know what you've been thinking, but that's why I'm reaching you with this word. So what are you thinking about yourself? He has higher thoughts for you. He has better thoughts for you. And that's why I'm reaching you. And so how do you find the will of God? Without transformation, when you are left to make your own choices and decisions, you would definitely just fall back and think like an ordinary mortal and canal man. So let's look into something that is very, very important as concerns why we are sharing today how to find the will of God when God's will is conditional or permissive, when God is waiting for you to decide before he takes action. Now when we look into our slide after we read those two scriptures, when God's plan is conditional. Now, God's plan is often conditional in the sense that God, when he created mankind, if you can see it on your first point, it's saying, man as steward of creation. Man as a steward of creation. God made us, God made man so that as he is, 
the master of the universe as in the king of kings and the lord of lords he said man would represent him on the earth every other created thing every other planet has to first answer to man when the world looks at man they need to see god through man that's what God made. So he gave man that ability to make choices. That's why he gave man in Genesis the audacity to name the animals. That right, that privilege to call things the way he wants and how he perceives them to be. That's where man gained that ability to make choices. Because man had to be the steward. And in being charged or steward, like the manager, a steward is the manager of creation. God created everything for man. Before he made man, he called out the planets, he called out the bodies, the heavenly, the earthly bodies, those beneath the earth. He called them out, created everything, and when it was done, he created man and handed these things to the care of man. So in order for man to handle and live like him, he gave man the ability to make his choices and decisions. So where did we start feeling? Where did man start feeling? Now we are talking about how to find the will of God when God makes his will permissive or conditional. When God wouldn't act or when God wouldn't do unless you do. How do you get to do what is going to be the preference of God when he too wants to see how much you love him and how much you express yourself or how much you are acting on behalf of his own favor not your own selfishness how do you get to know that we have started by talking about transformation and we are looking now about the state of man why God's will get to be conditional first he created man to be steward he gave man rights that's the point too as you can see you have the right to choose you have the right to make your choices you have the right to name things the way you want you have the right to own territories. <laughs> I'm not talking about human rights. <laughs> I'm talking about divine rights given to man by God. Praise God. I'm not talking about human rights that have been carved out. But you know the fundamental human right. The right to speech. The right to life. The right to worship. Those are fundamental human rights that I can be talking in context now. And so, God gave man these rights. So you have the right to choose your option. And you can see it from the very beginning in Genesis. Adam had the right to choose whether to eat from the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil or not. But there was one thing he didn't have, to have the full right to, to eat from the tree of life. So let's go back to the rights. Now, in God giving us rights, there is the rightful use and the abuse of these rights that God has given us. You can choose to use the right of free will and use it against God and you can choose to use that right of free will and use it to the glory of God everything that Adam faced is more uh, Jesus faced more than just what Adam faced and so that's the first thing we are talking about Adam was told not to eat of the tree now, Apostle John says in 1 John 2, 16, that there are three ways. Now, he says in 1 John 2, that this is the way sin comes into the world. Through the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And this, to these dimensions, Adam was tempted, and he ate of the tree of knowledge and evil, and fell. When Adam fell, he lost the union or communion he had with God. And the rightful understanding and the loss of that fellowship with the mind of God made Adam to make choices that are destructive to himself. And on his own, he couldn't save himself. On your own, you can't make the right choices which are eternally satisfactory to God except you live by the Spirit of God. I know you have a mind of your own and you are free to choose. Jesus said, broad is the way to destruction. You have many options. You can choose how you want to live. You can choose how you want to sleep. 
You can choose how you want to make money. You can choose how you want to work. You can choose how you want to carry about your activities. Anyhow. So Jesus said, too many options. Broad is the way to destruction. And many go by it in this world. But narrow is the way to life. And only a few find it. That's Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. So which way are you choosing? You have, you have your own choice. You have your own options. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're free. And everybody has a mind of their own. <laughs> but I tell you, that's why Jesus said, What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You are free to make your choices. But I tell you today, I want to pray with you so that you will not be left to those many options. And I said, when Jesus said, narrow is the way to life, he's saying the way to life is the option whereby you don't turn to the left or to the right. There are many choices in the left and on the right. But you want to turn to God. You want God's choice, God's option, God's will to be the one thing you decide about. And he says, this is the way to life. And that's why I'm sharing with you today to give you the strength to be able to make those choices. I'm not talking about resolutions. Resolutions alone can't help you. I'm talking about when there is an impartation and a flow of the Spirit of God that births the love of God in you. That's why I'm with you today. And I pray that even as I share these words and you get these mysteries, you will begin to understand the blessing of choosing to leave God's way no matter how difficult the surrounding circumstances may be. No murmuring. No murmuring. God's word may not appear sound, but it will command signs. You will not go through the broad way that many go by and they end up in destruction. Solomon says, a man's way may seem so right in his eyes, but the end thereof is destruction. Before you start sending your messages, as they're already coming in, don't forget you can send your questions, your prayer requests, and your contributions. And I'm going to be praying with you for a devoted life. I'm going to pray with you in the midst of those conditions you are facing that God has permitted to happen in your life. I want to turn around in the name of Jesus. Now, how man's will, man influences God's will, our decision is able to influence God's decision and that's what we are going to be looking at. Your decisions are able to influence God's decision because God created us and he made it in such a way that in the rulership of creation, he has to collaborate with man. So for us sons of God, Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, he said we are co-workers together with God. God is working on creation together with us. We, we are in a certain dimension. Man was in a certain dimension like a colleague with God. And so we are partners together in his work of creation. So what do you choose will affect what he does. And apart from that, there is the supremacy of God. He has placed the working conditions. You have the right to decide. But God is so powerful and has everything in plan such that whatever you are going to decide, there is an end of everything. You are deciding and making your decision under his permissive lines. Everything we do and everything we choose is because of divine tolerance. So we are going to delve into, into some biblical examples but before we do that, don't forget you can send your contributions through the numbers displayed on your screen, your prayer requests, and your questions. We will be back after a break. And when we come back, we'll look into biblical examples of what we've been talking about. Stay tuned. Call somebody to join us. We'll be back. <laughs> 